you break that stereotype because everything about you, the tattoos, the your past, the chains, everything about you screams, this is a scary guy. Exactly. And then you open your mouth <laughs> and I fall in love with you. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. Thank you. You know why, Josh? Because uh, in our community, you ha- you have to be hardcore or you got no core. Um, people deem you as being uh, uh, a good person. Like in the city, everybody must respect you because why? You must... You must earn that respect and by being what? By being a badass. You must be better than the baddest of them all. And I went out to be one of the baddest. And where I ended up was in prison. You know what I mean? And um, That's something I, I really want to talk about because everyone has this picture in their head of going to prison. What was it like for you when you got into prison for the first time on the first day and things were not no longer in your hands. You had no control. You were now a prisoner at Polsmoor. I was so scared. Just the, my whole body shivered every day for about a week of adaptation. You just you're in shock. Total horrendous shock. Because now a guy comes to you and he says, Look at here, I want to f you. You know, hey, what is this guy talking about? Is he gonna hurt me? What? But he wanted to have you as, 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 as a, um, you know, a sexual partner. How can you do Wait, If you don't mind me asking, were you sexually assaulted in prison? You know what, Josh? Um, I thank God always for giving me this. And, you know, he prepared me actually without me knowing that time. Because I had a stepfather who, you know, everything you've done wrong, he gives you hiding. I went to the formatory where you got... Like every day into a fight, hiding. So I became adapting to getting hurt, to getting f- into fights. When I went to prison, I had to fight. I had to do everything so that I can't be sexually abused. But I didn't escape it because, you know, you walk past a guy that is a, a homosexual, he taps on your, on your buttocks and, you know, all the things you take. You know, he, he, that's the way you say, hey, Blondie, I fought that name. Because I had this, this uh, light blondies here, and I've got green eyes, and they always used to call me, hey, Blondie, and that was something I fought with my whole life. Because in the night, they wake you up. There's mm-hmm. four guys, each one with a knife. Said, if you don't give us an ass, we're going to stab you. And a lot of people, uh, you know, that is now pure and plain and simple, um, doing things under pressure. And we weren't prepared for prison. I wasn't prepared for prison. I don't think it's something anyone can prepare for. Exactly. And so if I must look at it back, I was one of those who were lucky, but still, they never stopped harassing me. You know, until the day I stood up and I stabbed the water. The stab the water? I stabbed the water, yeah. Because they said, if I want to be one of them, this was a way of they making me scared, then you have to stab the water. So I took it upon myself and said, if I can escape all these things by stabbing the water, what the heck, man? There's, there's a small and price to pay. Were, were you involved with a gang before you went to prison? Yeah. I was of the old school gangsters, uh, Cape Town Scorpions. Is that what they were called, the Scorpions? Yeah, Cape Town Scorpions. You know, emphasize on the Cape Town Scorpions, you know what I mean? Yeah. We originated from Cape Town, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I was a, a scorpion. I was at the age of 12, I, I went to. At the age of 12? Of 12, yeah. I committed my first murder with a knife. I stabbed the guy to death, but he was also a junior like me. We had a fight. But we had walked away because I've been learned by my grandma and my grandpa if you see a fight coming on, walk rather away. You know, it's better to prevent the thing than to cure a thing. But I didn't understand that. That wasn't in, because uh, I thought if you hit me, I must hit you back. And it's one sickness that I have actually uh, been cured in prison, and that is um, aggressiveness. Uh, I had to be aggressive because if I didn't, if I wasn't aggressive, then they would have rolled over me and I would have been to whatever the case might be. And But I thank the Lord above for giving me that insight not to let and there's a I'm talking about the small percentage guys 
who comes out, who can really say that they went in one person, they came out another person, but he survived a lot of other things, you know, like sexual abuse, but all the other abuses I was sexually abused, verbally abused, physically abused. Everything comes with anything but we had to endure. You learn how to endure. Imagine you learn how to accept pain, you know, and overcome it because it's, um, if they hit you, they can't hit you a whole day, 24 hours in because you being uh, looked after. There's always guys coming around seeing if everything is okay. So there is a rest time. So what I've done, uh, because I've learned it aside with the gangsters, they said if you go to prison, you must be really cruel to be kind. And I became very cruel, Josh, because I had no alternative. That, that was my way of surviving. You have to be tough. I, you had There's, to be. You can't show any weakness. Tough. You know, tough comes out of, uh, uh, I think, I believe that you had to be conscienceless. You had to lose your conscience of feeling sorry for somebody. You had to laugh when somebody gets hurt. You know what I mean? And uh, what I've gone through is when they hit me and when they uh, uh, tortured me, for trying to sodomize me, they let me stand under a shower that drips on your head, and any time anyone comes past, they give you a smack like that, and you couldn't do nothing. I want to know, um, and I, I want to get more into like the daily life of prison, because this is something that us as humans can't comprehend. Like we have, we go through our days, and we take each day as they come, but. We don't think of... You were in prison for 18 years, right? Uh, my last... That's my last test in prison. 18 years and 6 months I was. 18 years and 6 because months. I had 21 years here. From the 21 years I've done 18 years and 3 months in prison. The others I've done outside, you know. The new system. Let me tell you something, Josh. Um, I never knew that uh, a place could have turned you strictly around. Like my uh, grandma... Passed away, told me from an angel to a devil turner, and I didn't know what she was meaning because uh, when last she saw me, I had a clean face. And when so, you got all the tattoos in prison, in prison, yeah. I, um, the, the one thing I want to know though is because obviously, 18 years is such a long time. I mean, I'm 25 years old, that's almost my whole life, exactly. The thing that I think a lot of people can't comprehend is when you're in prison and every day. You have to fight for your life, basically. I mean, how do you cope with that for 18 years? Yeah, you know, just it's not for 18 years. You don't cope for 18 years. Well, I think uh, the best part of it is five years. Um, if you're in prison and you, you get used to the routine of prison life. You just get used to it. You get used to it. And afterwards, only afterwards, Josh, when you get the nick and the trick of prison, then you find out, but these are the same guys that I was fighting outside. These guys, I ran over outside, man. I was stronger than me outside. Why couldn't I have been stronger than me in here? Because of... The numbers. Uh, the numbers. And that's another thing I want to know is about the numbers gangs. Like, whenever you refer to number, you're talking about the numbers gangs, right? Yes, yes. So, you said you were a part of the 28th. Yes. Which is the highest ranked. Yeah. You're going to... Uh, you, yeah. There's the, there the four runners of... of uh, I mean... Prison gangsterism, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're the top. Yeah, they're the top guys, yeah. And how do you become... I know you said you had to stab a warden. Was that your initiation into the 28th? My initiation, because they wanted to uh, sodomize me, and I didn't want to be sodomized, because my stepdad said, um, never ever can you let that happen. If you let that happen, I'm not going to call you a son anymore. And for me, it was important to be his son, because my real father actually wasn't there for me. So I, I, I had... This inside of me, I want to show my dad. You'll do anything. I'll do anything. For approval. For approval of him to accept me as his son. And he said, no bloody son of me is going to be a f You know, but in Afrikaans, you know, it's, it's English uh, swearing is, it, it sounds so easier on the tongue, but Afrikaans swearing is very, you know, it's very difficult. And he used to warn me, you make one mistake. I'm not going to accept you. As my son anymore. As my son anymore. You let yourself be abused and I know you won't be able to can look after your mom or me or your children or whatever future lies ahead. So you'll have to, uh, you, 
if somebody hits you, smacks you, you smack him back. Somebody spits you, you spit him back. Now in prison, we use all these raw tactics. In prison, I've seen guys losing who they are. I want to know, so obviously in the outside world, um, in, in, in prison, because you, you talk a lot about um, like sodomy and like sexual assault. Why do they do that in prison? Is it a power thing? Um, you know what? Um, I also wanted to know, but why do you guys want to do this? What? I, I slept uh, next to, you know, when I was still uh, fresh in prison, then uh, we used to sleep in uh, rooms. We had, what is for 15 people, we had to be 35 people in a room. So we were this tight. We never had beds at time, so we were on the ground. You know, we slept like... So like 35 people yeah. all sleeping on the ground? Yeah, we sleep on the ground. With, you, you get two mats and three blankets. So we used to make beds up uh, with each other. We do one bed, like we throw all the blankets. You only had maybe one blanket to cover yourself. But then again, you must lay next to somebody that is being sodomized. And the way they're going on here, and the way you're getting... Every night, the things happen here next to you. And... You get shocked because the way the, uh, these people are going on next to you, you get an uh, erection, and that's the thing that I couldn't first understand. Hey, I thought, hey, what? Is, am I mad or what? Because this is this not me. I don't want this to happen to me. But then again, um, um, it, it, it's so devastating onto your personality. You know what I mean? And I try to shut it out of my brain, but I'm hearing it through my ears. I couldn't keep my ears closed. You know, and these things are going on on a daily basis. And only if we are locked up, we call it, they put the masters on. In Afrikaans, they call it the Ewe Now imagine you, me, you are locked up. These waters only can see through the windows. They can shout at the guy, hey, stop. But he's in there, they fuck you, man. He stabs you, you know, until he's satisfied with what he's done. And what I've learned, I've picked up a sickness in prison, and that's aggressiveness. I had to be aggressive um, because the thing that was happening, I've never, I've only experienced in prison. Uh, I never, once in my life as a kid, did somebody ask me for, you know, approach me sexually as what it is in prison. Because for me, it was just not on, but it was a norm in prison because you didn't see it during the day when the world was there. But when we are locked up, we are locked up in a room, and that room gets locked up for 18, 19 hours. And 18, 19 hours, you must adapt to the routine of the gangs. And it's not easy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, were you, I mean, you, you said you were there, so for like after five years, you kind of get into the routine of yes. things. Uh, so does that mean after five years or so, like roughly, were you pretty protected and you had... You're, you were in the gang and no one really messed with you anymore. I had to fight for that position, Ross. I had to fight for that position um, because uh, it took me, I think, less than three years to adapt to the routine of prison, what goes on and what doesn't go on, you know. But, but it took me actually maybe five years to um, get the skill right, to know when to do what and how to do what. You learn to use your honors as a, as a, you know, it comes into into one room, there comes 60 packets of cannabis, as this large. You so was there, I mean? was there drugs in prison? Exactly. And you know what? Now we hear that uh, the police are going to come and search our room. When they search our room, Josh, they come out of, when they search our room, they don't get even a pit of cannabis. Now you tell me where is this cannabis hidden away? In the guy's asses, man. In the guy's asses? Yeah. In How much cannabis can you fit uh, in the Josh, you can take a whole carry bag of cannabis, then you make it into this small thing. And we, you just uh, put it up. And we put it up in the honest. Nah. See, this, this, was, this, this is why I'm wearing this shirt today. This was very scary, Josh. <laughs> because for me, it was said, do you want to be sodomized? Do you want to be sodomized? Or w are you willing uh, to carry for us our knives and our, 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 our cannabis? In your ass. I don't know how to uh, call this thing that you put up in your ass, but I know I've read a book about it. Of a, um, but it's, uh, 
I want to like, come on the name, but we call them like, like a cool, you know. They set it with plastic. They wrap it with plastic. They wrap it with plastic and they burn it. You can have a heap of cannabis, this big heap, and you can minimize it. It'll be this small, just You just compress it, compress it, compress it. Compress it and compress it, yeah. And I didn't must, you must carry it up in your ass during the day. Now, another thing they've le- that you must also learn is you can't let somebody see that you've got something in your ass. So you'll have to take what is on you and hide it away. You mustn't show it on your face. You mustn't show if you was approach the water with something, you've got maybe knives on you, you must approach the water as usual. This you learn to adapt to in prison and that I was so very good at because um and did you did you guys make uh, uh, weapons and stuff in your <coughs> in your cells but of course what I mean, what kind of weapons would you make uh, knives you know and, and how would you make them um the old prison is cement just you know and we you, you, you used to have these windows where this brass thing is that you close the window and open the window up again brass like handles brass, that have brass handles that, and we used to break it off and we put it up in our ass, bring it into prison, right? And the floor is cement. You know, there was always a part in the cell that the cement was still a bit rough, and you use that piece of roughness, then you sharpen the. Uh, we make it sharp, you know? Like, you can't own it as, as you know, our own knife is, but we make it sharp, and you couldn't stab also a guy on his clothes because. Uh, it wouldn't puncture uh, through. Uh, it wouldn't puncture through. You had to stab him. In his face, in the way his skin was, you know, what open skin. <coughs> At first, by me, it was a matter of survival. If I didn't do these things, then these guys would, would, would sodomize me. So I thought, no, to myself, wait, man. Afterwards, I came to terms with, I didn't pray anymore because I prayed every night, you know what I mean? And praying every night, praying every morning, wherever I had a chance to pray because I was an older boy. I knew I had to pray, and what prayers to say when, and but just the mere fact that my prayers wasn't heard at, I thought God forsaken me, and I changed from praying. I changed because I said I saw also if you are, you know, like this guy that is a weirdo, everybody would say out of your way, and that's how I became begin to have no conscience by hurting people. I'm and sure you wanted to hurt other people because of how you were hurt growing up and in prison as well. Just uh, the t- main trick was this. If you are weirder than the next person and then you get, you know, that status of you stay out of this guy's way. <laughs>